In this video, we're going to focus on the second part of the Gantt chart series for chart.js. We're going to put in here on the right side a status where you can see completed or delayed and pending. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's continue on and this is the advanced Gantt chart.js series part number two. So in part two, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the right side of our chart and we want to have like, for example, a success pending or a status related item here where we can see which one would be successfully done or not. So let's start to work on that. So we're going to scroll down here and then in here, what I want to do is I want to add the so-called status name namespace and we could say here, for example, everything that has been done here, it's all complete except this one is pending and let's get one that will be from Santiago and that will be uh, delayed, something like that. So we're going to say here, success or completed, I guess that will be the right term, completed. Uh, let's grab this all and make sure we have the comma here included. That's much better. So we can just paste them out, uh, paste them immediately. There we are. So once we did this, the next thing I want to do here with the status, we'll say this one is uh, pending or in progress. Then we have here delay. So if I refresh now, there we are. What we could do here then eventually is give it a color code. Depending on the value that we have here or the status, if it's complete or or incomplete or delayed, should have a certain color. However, that will be another video. What I want to do here is I want to have this pending if uh, padding here. We need to have some space here so we can start to put in, for example, a check mark or or put some text in there. So what I'm going to do here, going down here, you have the padding, left, comma, I'm going to say here, right side, and we also put a 100 pixel padding. There we are, now we have some space here. So the next thing what we want to do is, we go up here, and we could create a plugin, and to do that, I'll just put a comma here, and I'll just say here, this is the status plugin, and we will just grab here, the items and we can just put it somewhere here. It doesn't matter so much. So you slash slash status login block constant status equals. And I'm going to say yeah, the ID will be status comma and then here for the drawing it will be after data sets draw as well. And then we say your chart arts and login options so once we did that the next thing what i want to do here you can just grab these here and the reason why is we probably need to we need to do something on the ctx which is basically the canvas the data will be needed and the chart area will be needed this scale i'm not certain if we need the, the variables of the scales but just have them in there we can always remove them afterwards so the next thing what i want to do here is grab basically these values and push them in here or sorry not even these values I want to know whatever the status is and the status should show here and later on we probably need to use a check mark or a uh, other item maybe we can use font awesome for that that will be very exciting as well to do but that's all right later on first of all I have most of these already uh, assigned task uh, this one I already discussed in the previous video and we can probably use most of this entire framework we can copy this already we could even do it all in here but I want to keep them separate for now so now I'm going to just paste them in here if I save this and refresh all right so nothing truly happened although you might notice it's like on top of each other so let's change this what I want to do here remember we had here the data point and I have the name but now we don't have name anymore or that's not what we want to target we want to target the status but since they're in the same structure it's quite easy to do all we say here is say status save refresh as you can see here now this shows but let's move it to the other side so what I'm going to do here is um, no, it's a text align left and then uh, the middle we should have this one I guess we can just remove that one for now what I want to do is here, I want to have this X position. When this X position will be on the right side. And then we say here, if I do this, it will be exactly on this here. But then what I want to do here as well is plus 10 pixels maybe to get that like that. But 
eventually what I think would be even more better is to put it in the center here. So how do we do that? Well, remember, this is the right side and then we have here this padding from this point to here is approximately 100 pixels or to be more specific, it is 100 pixels because we assign here the padding right 100. So what I can do here is maybe say here plus 50. So once we did that, we could save this refresh now we are here but you might notice something here and i realized that this here was normally not in here as well so i'm going to remove that and i'm going to show you later on why and you will see some uh, changes if i save this refresh this is all fine but this one should be in the center so what i'm going to do here is the text align by default it is text align left but if i do this here on center and save this refresh now it's in the center but as you can see here this is centered, but for some reason this is, or at least the uh, center features are bleeding towards all the other text as well, which I do not want. Now, we're, now we are missing certain characters or letters from the names. So what we're going to do here is, this must be of course text align left. What we could do here is basically this, we can copy this, go down here, put the enter, and then we say here, left, save, refresh. There you are. What we could do as well is to make sure that we have a save, and that's why the CTX save is very important. CTX save, we're going to grab this, and we do here, what we will do here is CTX.restore. What this does is basically undo whatever we did previously, and that's very important. So once we did this, we can do the same here, and I think this will probably now be restored. As you can see here, this will be just normal, even though I don't activate this, because I just restore or undo whatever we, we did here. That's basically what we're doing. So let's copy this and do the same here. Then we just restore it as well, just to avoid if ever something else would be bleeding through or bleeding towards any other object or text. Save that, refresh, there we are. So now we have this here that is completed uh pending or in delay and then what we could do eventually is have a color for that or we should have here maybe a font awesome and we have like a circular shape that could be another item as well we'll cover that in the next video we're going to first give these the color coded of red or if it's completed it should be green if it's delayed it should be red and if it's pending it should be yellow 